Hey everybody, Christian here. I hope you all have watched my last video about my new storage server that I've built with TrueNest Scale. If you haven't watched it, well, then do it right after this video, because in that video I said an important sentence. I believe this system is probably the best operating system for any home lab or self-hosting projects. And today I want to give you some more background and explanation about my point, show you what I've tested and why I'm so impressed with this new version of TrueNAS. It doesn't mean it's perfect, uh, but we will go over this step by step. First, before we start, I want you to keep an eye on the sponsor of today's video, Teleport, because Teleport is my absolute favorite tool for secure access in my home lab. It's completely free and open source and gives you two-factor authentication and audit logging for all your Linux servers, Kubernetes clusters, databases, web applications and desktops. I've done several videos and tutorials about it now and another one is coming in the following month about RDP and desktop access. I'm really excited about that. So just download and try it out and if you're interested in using this in your company environment, just read or to the teleport guys you will find a link to their website in the description of this video down below uh, okay let's go and start with TrueNest scale and for everybody who doesn't know what TrueNest scale is i quickly want to summarize it TrueNest is created by ix system and made as a nas operating system that can run on various hardware appliances or self-built systems it's completely free and open source and available in the TrueNest core version so that is the operating system based on freebsd which was formerly called freenas but now they also have a new version created which is called TrueNest scale and that is basically a rewritten version based on a Linux system instead of FreeBSD. TrueNest Scale is very similar to TrueNest Core, but with a couple of interesting differences. It's called a hyper-converged storage system that scales up or out, so it's perfect for data center clusters or hybrid cloud environments, but you could also of course use it as a single node device. And the underlying Linux kernel gives TrueNest Scale some more interesting capabilities. The most interesting feature for me is the ability to run Linux containers, but not only as simple Docker environments, it also has a Kubernetes setup based on on K3S under the hood. So in a short sentence, TrueNest Scale is an awesome operating system that I mainly use as a storage device and it's great for that. In my last video I showed you how I'm using it on my storage server to create a big storage pool powered by the ZFS file system. It can also run virtual machines, that's by the way a feature that I haven't tested so far but maybe we will do that in the future. Could be an interesting topic as well, so please tell me if you'd like to see another video about that. And by the way, if you enjoy my videos and you feel they're helping you, then leave a like and subscribe to my channel that would be really awesome. And so all of these features are really amazing, but as I said, what impressed me the most is the ability to run containers directly on the system by using Kubernetes. That is the reason why I believe it's probably the ultimate system for self-hosting, because it gives you everything that you would need. It has a reliable storage system with backups and file sharing, a nice web interface to manage all your resources like virtual machines, and now also run containers directly on the system. I haven't really found another the system that offers all of these features in a nice package that's easily to administrate. But let's take a closer look at the implementation of containers on TrueNet Scale. To run containers on TrueNAS, you need to go into the menu apps and select a storage pool first. So that is used to store the container volumes, the images and the config files. So everything that is needed in this environment. Once you selected your primary storage pool, it takes some time to initialize it. And then you can start deploying some applications on the system. First, I want to show you how to run a simple Docker container image because this is really easy. Just click on launch Docker image and then you can configure the container. Here I'm just demonstrating that feature so I run a simple Nginx web server. I will use the official Nginx Docker container image and just proceed with the default settings. In the networking menu, you can select your primary network card where you want to expose this service and also give this a static IP address. So this should be in the range of your network of course, but that's pretty nice as you can assign a complete different IP address to this container than TrueNAS itself has. So that's something really well done by IX Systems because it makes the deployment very easy and somewhat similar to running a virtual machine. You also need to expose a container port which will make this Nginx web server available on the entire network. I don't know why it needs to be higher than port 9000 as we have used a different IP, then it should be fine to expose whatever port we want, but Hey, who knows? I just selected port 9000 here for this example and that should be good. 
For this short demo, we don't need anything else like storage and so on, but you could of course also use a persistent volume here for this container or configure any other settings. And once this is saved, you can see that TrueNetScale is deploying this application. That always takes some time of course to download the image and set up everything, but once the deployment is finished, we can ping this container and also get a web page by running the curl command on this IP address. So we have just created a simple Docker container on TrueNest. That's really cool. You can see running containers on TrueNet scale is pretty easy. So just define your image, the settings, and you can run any container on the system. But this probably isn't the usual way how you'd want to deploy all your applications. The Nginx server was a pretty straightforward example, but most applications would of course need some certain settings or configuration storage, maybe a second database container or even more complex deployments with Redis database for caching, helper containers, and so on. And for these more, complex deployments, TrueNet Scale offers something similar to an app store. You might have already seen that on the front page of the apps menu. So there you can deploy predefined packages of applications. What's also interesting to know is, even when these applications or container images might seem they would just run based on Docker, this actually is not true because TrueNet Scale always runs these containers or images on a Kubernetes cluster. And some people might not be worried and asking what the hell is Kubernetes? <laughs> but the good news about it on TrueNet Scale is that you actually don't really need to know Kubernetes because IX Systems has hidden all the Kubernetes complexity on the web interface. We will talk about that later if that's really a good decision, but I guess most people will be happy when they don't need to deal with it because let's be honest, Kubernetes isn't easy to learn. It takes some time and effort to get into that and IX Systems has done a pretty great job of implementing all the great features of Kubernetes without forcing the users to deal with the underlying resources. However, if you still want to have a look at what's actually going on there, you can still do this by logging into the shell and run the k3s command. So here you can see that it uses k3s to deploy a Kubernetes cluster. And if we take a closer look at our example of our Nginx container image, you can see that TrueNest has created a separate namespace for this. It's always creating an ix dash and then the name of the application, the namespace. And in this namespace, there are all necessary Kubernetes resources. All right, so now I want you to show something else and let's go back in the apps menu and take a look at what's in here. I guess the latest update of TrueNet Scale has added a bunch of new applications to this app store, if you want to call it a store, uh, but this isn't really much. There are a few interesting applications in here, but it's still very empty. So that's because we only have enabled the official TrueNAS scale chart repository that's maintained by IX Systems and they have added the most, maybe the most wanted applications to this app store, but you'd probably already guess, yeah, you can also add more applications in here by adding another chart repository. So these charts are packages of deployments with predefined Kubernetes resources that are needed to run an application. I think it's built based on Helm. So you can see it like a Linux package manager that allows you to easily deploy a complex application deployment with a single command. And because this is an open standard, you can add any other chart repository you like. You can create your own one, but there is also a community around this that has created Kubernetes charts, especially built and made for TrueNet scale, which is called True Charts. It's made by the community for the community. And by simply adding their repository to TrueNet scale, you will have access to their entire library of application charts. Uh, by the way, the project is on GitHub and they have a phenomenal documentation and website about running apps on on TrueNet Scale, very cool community. I also quickly had a chat with them and they are really amazing and helpful. You will find a link to their website, of course, in the video description. And to add their True Charts repository, just go into Manage Catalogs. Here you can add your custom chart repositories and according to the True Charts documentation, we need to add the following entries here. So just give it the name True Charts and add their repository link from their official documentation. In the preferred trains, you should also select the core and the stable trains. And now when we are adding this, TrueNAS will collect all the charts from the True Charts repository. That can of course take a few minutes because it's a pretty big catalog. But once it is finished, you should see a new entry here. And after refreshing, you can see so many more applications in this section or in this App Store. <laughs> let's, let's just call it App Store, okay? <laughs> The blue ones are the official charts maintained by IX Systems and the yellow ones are managed by True Charts. And as you can see, there are a couple of interesting applications in here, like Zero Tier, for example, that you can use as a VPN solution or Grafana for monitoring 
We also have Prometheus and Traffic, some typical Kubernetes applications, or Vault Warden, a very cool self-hosted password manager based on Bitwarden. Yeah, there's so much in here, and I could spend hours and hours going through this list and show you how to deploy every single app, but I guess there's no point doing this. Anyway, I quickly want to show you how to deploy such an application. For example, let's try to deploy Nextcloud on TrueNet Scale with a TrueCharts repository. So first you would need to select the Nextcloud charts from the True Charts repo and click on install. So now we can give this application a name like Nextcloud and also select a specific version if we want to do that. In the controller section we could also specify some advanced parameters. Usually you don't need to customize or specify anything here. So just go to the next section. And in the container config, this is always very application specific. So depending on which application you're configuring, you will see different options and configuration settings. TrueCharts is maintaining these installation patterns for every application. So here are things like the Nextcloud admin user and password that I have customized, of course, and also the trusted proxies IP, for example. So this is something you would need in Nextcloud if you want to use a reverse proxy, I guess. And I also needed to select the node IP. This is one of the TrueNAS servers IP addresses, so just select the one where you want to make this application accessible on. And also don't forget to select the correct time zone from the drop down menu. And in the networking configuration, we can specify the Kubernetes service for this application. Now that might be a bit confusing to people who don't know Kubernetes as it defines the Kubernetes service types like cluster IP, node IP, load balancer and so on. And it helps to know what these service types are and understand how they work. But luckily in most scenarios, if you see something like this, the default values, which are marked as simple usually, they should be fine in most scenarios. So in this example, I don't need to change this type. I just pick simple and choose a port number where I want to expose that, for example, 9010. And this will make the application accessible on that selected port and IP address. The next section is about storage, because if we want to deploy Nextcloud, we of course want to bind it to a persistent storage location, otherwise we would lose data every time we want to restart this container. And in Kubernetes, there's also a Kubernetes resources, which is called PVC, that stands for Persistent Volume Claim. And that's a pretty nice feature in here, because the Kubernetes implementation of TrueNAS also deploys a storage class that automatically requests and binds a persistent volume from your ZFS storage pool you have selected into the Kubernetes Port. So if you enable snapshots and backups on your IX applications data set, this is always included in any backups. You even don't need to take care of storage and volumes in here. Just keep the default values and this will store all the data that the application needs in a ZFS storage pool. However, if you want to customize it and want to use a specific host path, you can also do this of course. So here TrueCharts gives you enough flexibility by still maintaining reasonable default values. I like this a lot. Now the next section is also pretty interesting because some people might have noticed, oh the service type has a cluster IP type available and here we also have an ingress checkbox. So that could expose this application by using a reverse proxy in Kubernetes, something like nginx or traffic. Uh, by the way, TrueCharts has also a nice tutorial about that on their documentation page. So that will tell you exactly how to deploy traffic and use it as a reverse proxy for all your TrueNAS applications. Uh, this is something I probably will take on in a separate video, so for this example I I didn't select ingress, I just used the service type simple with a port forwarding. But just keep that in mind, it's possible to use traffic on TrueNAS even on port 4 for free and with trusted SSL certificates. So once my video about that is finished, I will link you that in the description. In the next section, you could also customize the security and permission settings for this application. But again, the default values here should work in most scenarios. Also in the next section, like add-ons or advanced, yeah, the default values are fine. So I just proceeded with the deployment and confirmed it. And now TrueNAS is creating all of these Kubernetes objects and resources. So that may take some time until everything is deployed. Meanwhile, let's explore what's going on in K3S because this is also deployed in a separate namespace. And when you query all your resources in that namespace, you can see what TrueNAS is doing under the hood. So here you can see it starts initializing the pods that run our containers like the load balancer, the service object, the Redis and Postgres databases, and of course the Nextcloud application container. And it also has a service object for all of these pods. The application container is exposed via service type load balancer on this X 
external IP address. And we also have persistent volume claims that store all the data for the databases and the application. It's pretty interesting to see what's going on here. And if you know Kubernetes, it definitely helps you to find out what's actually going on under the hood. And once the deployment is complete and you open a web browser on this IP address and port, you can see Nextcloud is now installed. How easy was that? I'm really impressed by this. Sure, there might be more stuff about this to know, like deploying applications with an ingress controller and certificates, but this system is freaking amazing. I think it is great for people who just want to have a self-hosted environment at home and just want to have a reliable storage server that has the capabilities to run containerized applications on top of it. Even without knowing how to administrate Kubernetes, you can do this very easily. But there is still a pretty big drawback for people like me, and I want to explain this because it might not be a problem for everybody. I totally get it. But for me, this is a pretty big deal and it also might hold some Kubernetes experts or companies back using this. Because Truda Scale doesn't really give you any tools to administrate the underlying Kubernetes cluster. And I guess this is based on a decision that Ike Systems needed to make because they wanted Truda Scale to be a well-integrated Kubernetes system that nearly everybody can use, even without knowing how Kubernetes works. And this can be a good thing. Just like I said, if you want to have a a storage server and you want to just self-host a bunch of applications like a password manager, a Nextcloud or a VPN service, whatever, this is perfect. But if you'd like to have a little more control over the Kubernetes implementation and management of resources like how pods, volumes or daemon sets deployments are working. Maybe you want to use management applications like Portainer, Rancher or Terraform that fit well into your automated workflows of Kubernetes. Then you are missing some very basic features and tools like a kube config. Where can I download a kube config file and connect via kubectl to this cluster? Or where can I see how many volumes are created, how much storage they consume and so on? So this is something I'd really like to see because TrueNAS gives me this wonderful web interface. All the complexity is hidden, everything is clickable and so on. So that's really nice. But on the other hand, it's missing control over the system. I'm missing kubectl and Portainer and Rancher and Terraform. That's what I'm working with in my home lab. So that's a bit unfortunate. And yeah, as I said, some people might not need this. You might say, hey, I don't want to use a terminal tool to deal with the complexity of Kubernetes. And that's fine. But TrueNAS scale already has that built in, so why not add a small button at the settings menu to open the Kubernetes API port and download the kube config file. That would be awesome, Ike Systems. Just as an idea. But apart from that, they have done an incredible job. I think I've said it multiple times, I know, but that's just my honest opinion. I'm very impressed by this system. And maybe if TrueNet Scale gets some more advanced management tools for Kubernetes in the future, that would be even more awesome. I guess I will use this uh, Kubernetes implementation to run a few applications that just make sense to run on a NAS system. For example, something like a password manager that would make totally sense for my workflow because TrueNAS is already the point where I store my important data and backups on. So why not just run some applications on it that rely on this important data store? One thing that I've noticed during my testing setup though is that it sometimes is a bit slow. And I think that's probably depending on the storage pool these containers are running on because currently I only have this one ZFS storage pool with my 12, 14, terabyte hard drives, so there are no SSDs or NVMEs, and even though this is pretty good as an SMB or NFS drive, I guess this is still lacking performance when it needs to transfer many small files or VM disks or containers. I think this is the case with this Kubernetes cluster as well. And I'd like to test if this system becomes a little bit faster when I initialize the Kubernetes storage pool on SSDs or maybe even NVMEs, so that I basically have two separate pools on my storage server. One for my network shares that's running with usually HDDs, big files, backups and video footage and one smaller SSD or NVMe pool for my container workflows, VM disks or persistent volumes. So something that doesn't need a big storage pool but a fast storage pool. I'm looking into that and I will give you an update what I've tested so far and of course you're still waiting for the traffic and SSL video on TrueNAS. You need to be a bit patient with me please. But for now I hope that was still interesting and always thanks everybody for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.